Yes, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Won't you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come to worship you, to adore you, to love on you. If you never did another thing for us, Lord, just because of who you are, oh, hallelujah, we'll continue to worship and bless your name. And now, Lord, at this time of service where the dialogue becomes a monologue, speak, Lord, through me. Your servant is listening. Oh, God, let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Let your word go forth with power and your anointing, with clarity and accuracy to accomplish what you and only you desire it to do in the lives of those who pull themselves up to the table. Feed us, Lord God till we want no more. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen to God. Amen. To God be the glory. The word this morning was already read in your hearing. It is a long text. I pray, I pray, I hope that you all go back and reread the chapters that we've studied together and God has spoken to us about because in service, we can only take a, a, a short portion, but we want to make sure we have the whole counsel of the word of God. Amen. And so this morning, the focal verse is just two verses, verse uh, 45 and verse 46a. That's just the first portion of verse 46 of chapter 17, and it reads as follows. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. And for a theme, a topic, a subject, a focal point this morning. I'm going to speak from the theme, how to defeat your giants. Amen. How to defeat your giants. David and Goliath, you already know, is a well-known story of winning against all odds. It's a story of how the perceived underdog comes out on top. A narrative, I tell you, of tremendous victory. But with all the goosebumps it may give you as you read the story, after re hear all the goosebumps with the fanfare that you might feel, I propose to you on this day that for David, it was no big deal. It was just another day topside. And all because he was rooted and grounded in two very important things. Two things that we ought each have a very good handle and tight grip on. Two things that ought to be as common and easy to grasp as breathing. But unfortunately for many of us living in this fallen world, these two things seem to elude us over and over again, as if they were some mystical thing like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And those two things that David was rooted and grounded in are these. One, David knew who God is, not was, but he's the same God today, tomorrow, and always. David knew who God is. And two, he knew who he was in relation to God. David was rooted in who he was and who God is. He was not delusional. He was not arrogant. He was simply grounded in his true authenticity. He knew what God given gifts and skills he had, and he understood that whatever he was lacking, God would make up for. This chapter opens, and again, we see Israel gather for war with none other than, if you didn't know by now, you might have guessed it is the Philistines, that old familiar frenemy and enemy. And they are gathering in what appears at a casual glance to be their normal mode of operation. See, Israel, this army, this great army of the living God is sidelined again, hunkered down again, huddled together again, shaking and quaking again because the threat of the champion of the other army, a man named Goliath, a man who my Bible tells me was over nine feet tall. So I could kind of imagine why they might be a little shaken in their inner selves over nine feet tall. He towered over many of the men, in fact, over every man in Israel. 
and he was challenging them to a fight. I don't know about you, but if somebody big and brawny and muscular and with all of this armor came and, 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 and challenged me to a fight, and he's over nine feet tall. I might be a little afraid myself unless I'm rooted and grounded in the same things as David. This Goliath was huge and intimidating. And when he opened up his mouth, he invoked fear in the hearts of men. Goliath was so big, he looked undefeatable. I'm gonna say it again. He looked undefeatable. But how many know you can't go what with by what your eyes see? You have to go by what is in the kingdom kingdom of God. And every day, this giant, this hero, this champion, he would come out and he would taunt and he would threaten the children of Israel. And unfortunately for them, they listened. They sat there and they listened to every threat. They sat there and they absorbed every taunt. How many know that sometimes you got to close your ear to what the enemy has to say? You can't sit there and let him keep lying to you and just sit there and absorb it and meditate on it. You'll be just like the children of Israel, growing weaker and weaker every day. And instead of standing up on what you know to be true, you find yourself falling and fainting and slipping away. How many let a pile of bills just steal all your joy? You look at them every day and you let the enemy whisper how you're going to pay them, how you're going to make it out of this mess, how you're ever going to make it back to equilibrium where you have enough and you're not being threatened with disconnected notices each and every day. You ain't got no money. You ain't got no friends and you ain't even got no job or prospects thereof. If you let the bills talk to you and the devil talk to you, you'll be just like the children of Israel, shaking and quaking on the sidelines, ready to throw in the towel, ready to call it quits and defeat, wondering how in the world you going to get out of this. Goliath challenged them every day. They allowed Goliath to set the atmosphere of their daily living, to set it with oppression, dread, and despair. If we turn on the news every day and we allow only those reports to shape our thinking and our mind, if we absorb it without encountering and seeing what God has to say on the matter, we will say things the same as the children of Israel and we'll grow weaker every day and we'll live in a atmosphere of oppression, depression, dread, and despair. If we allow everything that appears bigger in your life than really is, simply because it's yet unresolved. You got to remember that giants do die and giants do fall. Now, while the Israelites, again, were on the sidelines, just in their fear, there for over 40 days, my Bible tells me. And then along comes David. Now, David was not looking for a fight. David simply showed up out of obedience to his father's command to bring provision to his brothers who were on the front line. Bring them some bread and bring the captain some hard cheese. David just happened to stop by this day because he was on a mission to be the hand to feed his brothers on the front line. And it is while he is here, not looking for a fight, not thinking about a fight, that he hears that all too familiar taught from Goliath. He hears Goliath say, today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we might fight together. Excuse me. When David heard him, when David heard Goliath, he didn't fall out like the rest. He didn't absorb it like the rest. He asked the right question. He doesn't ask them, how big is he? Is he really nine feet? He doesn't ask them, how many fights has this giant been in and won? He doesn't ask them, has he ever been defeated before? Has anyone ever taken him out? No, he asked the right question. He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine 
In other words, he's immediately putting Goliath in his place, immediately putting Goliath in his proper position, immediately putting the problem back to a molehill molehill size instead of the mountainous size the children of Israel had allowed it to become. Because if this is an uncircumcised anybody, it means this is somebody who's not on the Lord's side. But I'm on the Lord's side. And I know that if God be for us, who can stand against us? If God be for me, who can stand against me? I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how much power you have. I don't care how big the problem looks. If you're not on the Lord's side, who can dare stand against me? Because I know I'm on the Lord's side. He remembered who he was and he remembered who god is and everyone else he said shame on you if you act like you don't know my brothers and my sisters to defy in this context is defined as the challenge by reproach and reproach means with disrespect disapproval and disgrace here we have goliath defying the chosen children of Israel, which is defying their God with disrespect and disdain. My brothers and my sisters, anytime the enemy comes against you, he is defying the Lord's army, attempting to belittle and discredit the legitimacy and power of the Lord's army, which if you don't know now, you know you are a soldier in. We sing, or maybe I know I used to sing, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier. So every time the enemy comes against you, he is defying the Lord's army of which you are a soldier. So the first step in defeating your giants is number one, show up for the fight. Show up for the fight. All the enemy is doing is issuing a challenge he thinks is impossible. Issuing a challenge he believes will scare. He's issuing a fear tactic because the enemy has no power over God. But the only way that challenge could ever, could ever have a payday is if you forget that you don't fight by yourself, that you only need to show up to the fight and stand still and let God do the heavy lifting. Let God do the fighting for you. The Israelite army was sitting there paralyzed by fear, forgetting that all they had to do was line up and getting marching formation and God would handle the rest. It took a young man, not legal age to fight. The reason David wasn't in this army was because David was not old enough to sign up and enlist. It took somebody not old enough to be there to let them know that there's only one way you're going to make it through this. And that's if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Don't size it up by what you think you know. Don't count their uh, armor and weapons against your weapons. Just get in marching formation and expect God to show up for you. Every time you move on what God told you to do and someone comes and tells you how you can't do it, how you're not smart enough, strong enough, how you don't know all the right people, you don't have the right personality, you ain't got the right connections, you don't have the right pedigree, you don't have enough money, you don't have the look, sister, you don't have the look, my brother. Every time they beat you down with why what you feel called to do is not a good idea for you to do. What what they're actually doing is defying the word of the Lord that he put in you. They are challenging God by saying the word he spoke to you will not come to pass, that it is impossible for you to achieve or receive what 
You know God told you. They are coming against the word of God in you. But my Bible tells me that there's nothing too hard for God and nothing that is impossible for God. As a matter of fact, he chose what is foolish to shame the wise and he chose what is weak to shame the strong. They're just coming to distract you, to discourage you. But the question on the table is, will you absorb the lie? Or will you do like David said and rise to the challenge and say, uh-uh, I'm not having it. In this world, I know there might be many troubles, but be of good cheer because I know my God has already overcome the world. My brothers and my sisters, when calamity strikes, when your giants rise up, when your mountains seem too far uh, uh, large for you to submount, when the billies of overdue bills keep calling your line, when the doctors are trying to give you a bad report about how all hope is lost, when there's strife in your home, you got rebellious children that you don't know where they are and they're just out doing what they want to do. Don't cower in your tent door. Don't bury your head in the sand. You know how we do. We'll let the bills pile up and then just get depressed. God says, first thing you got to do is show up for the fight. Address that problem with the word of God. Stand still and know God's got your back. Stand still and know he'll fight for you. Go to your God in prayer and watch him deliver you. Number two, know and accept who you are the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're not perfect. I don't know why we keep trying to pretend that we'll be on this side of glory. We just need to keep pressing to the mark. We just need to keep being refined by God. We just need to keep getting better, but we'll never have it all together as long as we're on this side of glory. But you got to know who you are. You've got to set who you are right where you are and know that God loves you and accepts you as you are as well. David had to know who he was. And in his knowledge of who he was, he, it was not based on his family. We already saw last week that his family act like he didn't exist. So he didn't know who he was based on how his family treated him. He knew who he was. He knew the gifts God had put in him. He knew what he was capable of what passions God had birthed in him from the very beginning. He knew he had a long way to go, but he knew how to use what God had already given him right where he was. And he didn't belittle the gifts in him. He was all rooted, already rooted in the knowledge of who God is. And upon hearing the boldness of David, because David was out there talking a lot of big talk, he's saying, why are you letting this Philistine taunt you and defy and talk about your God? Why are you letting him threaten you like you don't have power from another source? And Saul heard about the big talk that David was laying down on the battlefield. And Saul called him and commissioned him for the fight. Now listen to this. Saul didn't really believe that David was able to beat this giant, but Saul was the only one that stepped up. Don't you know many people will use you even if they don't believe in you? You've got to know who you are. You've got to know and accept who you are. Now, the first thing Saul said to David when he commissioned him for the fight, here he is saying, I'm going to let you fight. And the first thing he says is, I don't think you're able to do it. I don't think you'll be able to take this giant out. This Philistine can fight, you know, he's got armor and he's got a whole lot of power. And you know what else? He's trained in war from his youth. He's trained in war and you are a young lad, not even able to be in war yet. I don't think you could do it. Have you ever encountered a well-meaning soul whose every word of their supposed encouragement only managed to discourage you more? If you don't uh, uh, know and accept who you are, you might find yourself willingly attempting to morph into their perception of who they think you ought to be to achieve what God has purpose for you to achieve. How many have ever been in a corporation and you come as you are and everyone's like, if you want to uh, 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 make promotion, you need to do things this way. You need to speak this way. You need to walk this way. You need to dress this way. You need to write your paper this way. 
They don't see who you are, the gifts that God put in you. And when we don't know and accept who we are, we're constantly changing who we are to look like somebody else. Have you ever noticed that there's sometimes everybody preaches the same? Because somebody told them, if you want to preach, you got to preach like this. And instead of using our gifts, how God gave them to us, we mimic it and copy in somebody else. Why churches, even though we have the ability to have worship different in all of our churches, they end up looking the same. Because somebody somewhere said, you got to do it this way. You got to do that that way. And slowly but surely, we begin to morph into who they think we ought to be, perform how they think we ought to perform, and miss and leave behind entirely the me that God created us to be. And in so doing, we are missing a lot of the ministry, a lot of the favor, a lot of the blessings that God had in store for us. Because when we showed up at our fights with our giants, we didn't look like what they expected to show up because we had morphed into something else. Know that God made no mistakes when he created you. Know that whatever gifts God put in you, even though they're not perfect, even though you're still maturing them, even though you're still growing them, even though you might not know how to use them, even if nobody else is moving and talking and walking like you do. If God put it in you, it's for a purpose that he might get the glory. So the first thing Saul said to David is, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're going to go out in war, let me give you my armor. Because you know what, it is war. So I think you need a little armor on. So I'm going to give you my uh, my tunic and I'm going to give you my helmet and I I'm going to give you my, my, my how I'm dressed. And I'm going to give you my armor because you can't go out there like that. You can't go out there like you are. You can't do this thing like you are. And David at first went along to get along and tried it on thinking possibly he made some sense. But when he tried it on and walked around, he said, I'm not used to this. He said, I can't go in these. Now let's be clear. Many of our uh, Sunday school stories paint, paint David as a little tiny boy with the armor was so big for him that he couldn't walk around. The devil is a liar. David was 17 or 18 years old. David was able to reasonably fit the armor, but after putting it on, he's like, I'm I'm not used to this. I can't go in these. I got to show up in the fight as my authentic self. I can't go in your definition of me. I can only go in who God created me to be. I can't go in your understanding of how things should be. I can only go in how God revealed it to me. I can't go in your understanding of how things ought to work. I got to go in how God created me to work. Don't you know God knows who he calls and he's already given you everything you need to accomplish the task he's given you. Even if nobody else sees it, God sees it. David knew that his authentic self was enough to do whatever God asked him to do, else God would not have asked him to do it. In and of himself, he knew he was enough. He didn't have to dot another I or cross another T. He was already enough for God. So he didn't need to take on the appearance of what you think a soldier should look like. David knew what we ought to remember from last week, that men look on the outward and miss what is important. Beloved, know who you are and accept who you are. As a matter of fact, as Saul kept telling him, take this armor, take this armor, David responded in his authentic self. He said, I, I don't know about being trained for war like this Goliath, this is true. I, I don't know about needing to wear this armor in a battle like you tell me to do, but I'm not used to it and I can't go in this. But let me tell you what I do know, that when I'm out there taking care of the sheep, like God asked me to do, if a lion comes to devour them with my bare hands, I take the lion and shut his mouth and hit him and club him and kill the lion. And as a matter of fact, 
when I'm out there doing what God asked me to do. If a bear comes and attacks the sheep, I kill even the bear with my own hands. What I need to let you know is I don't know about the armor and I don't know about being trained for war, but when I show up for any fight, the Lord always backs me up. The Lord always shows up for me. The Lord takes what's in my hands and uses it to give me a great victory. And as a matter of fact, the only thing that I don't understand is why you are sitting up here and why your so-called soldiers are sitting up there and yet and still nobody has taken up their armor to fight this Philistine who's come against the living God, who's defied him, who's challenged him, who's disgraced him and tried to belittle him. And it's just like that even today. See, we can't let fear of what other people are saying stop us from cutting off the heads of giants in our life. Stop us from showing up in the fight as our authentic self and knowing the gifts that God has given us, knowing the call God has placed on our life. And it doesn't matter if nobody else is doing it like you. If nobody else looks like you, you know if God gave it to you, God will use it for his glory. Lastly, the third to defeat your giant is you have to know whose you are. Now, everyone here, we know the end of the story. David goes out to the battlefield with a slingshot and five smooth stones. He confronts the giant Goliath that had all Israel afraid for over 40 days with a slingshot and five smooth stones. Something that we modern day people who don't know anything about the wild would relegate to just a children's toy. This giant is coming against David with a sword, mind you, three things, javelin and a spear. This giant is coming against David, armored up to the hill. This giant is taller than David, he's stronger than David, and he is more well-trained than David, and not just more well-trained, but he's got years of experience to back it up. I mean, you know, you don't become a champion of an entire people and an entire army overnight. That takes years of success stories, working your way up the ranks. He was an undefeated and perceived undefeatable champion. There is a difference, beloved. Just because something has been undefeated in your life up until now, it does not mean that it is undefeatable. Just because you have a giant, a problem, a mountain, an issue in your life that thus far you haven't made it over by no way means that it is undefeatable just because thus far we haven't been over able to defeat racism especially in the police forces does not mean that it is undefeatable if we would show up for the battle with who we are and who god called us to be and be mindful of whose we are i has not seen nor ear heard what god will be able to do. david showed up with the slingshot and five smooth stones he showed up to the fight, and despite the continued taunting from Goliath, looking at David's use, despising him because he's inexperienced. As a matter of fact, he says, what am I, a dog, that you show up here with your little sticks and your little rocks? Who am I, a dog? And Philistine cursed David by his gods. And what we need to be very careful when we read the scripture is this word God is lowercase g, meaning he's no real God at all. I can imagine David thinking, what am I supposed to be scared? <laughs> what am I supposed to be afraid? You going to curse me by a piece of wood? You going to curse me by a little stone which you put a little face on? Oh, who, what am I supposed to be afraid? And in that very moment, David ran up to him. He placed one smooth stone in the slingshot and he drew back and he released. And with one smooth stone, my brothers and my sisters, now you know that stone couldn't have been very big. It wasn't no boulder, it wasn't no rock. It was one smooth stone, something that you pick up when you go to the beach and you say, ooh, look how pretty it is. Something you go home and put on your desk because you like the way that smooth stone shines. He took while he was running out of his back pole. 
one smooth stone. And while he was still in motion, placed it in the slingshot, he pulled back and he released. And we all know how the story ends. With that one smooth stone, he managed to hurl it and hit the Philistine smack dead in his forehead, right where there was no helmet in place, right where they have the little cutout of cutesy cutesy. It managed to hit him right there. It didn't hit the helmet. It didn't hit the metal. And not only that, this one smooth stone that little David took and slung, hit him with enough force to knock this giant on his knees and give him the KO. He knocked him out. He knocked him out so that he was then able to go and, 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 and cut off his head. And now I know, I know, I know for many of us listening, we're reminded when we're watching movies of this nature and all of a sudden there's somebody, somebody you didn't expect, the underdog that does something so miraculous, that does something so stupendous, that somehow all of a sudden he defeats the one that is 10 times bigger than him, that has all manner of paraphernalia of ways to take you out, the Uzi and everything else, and yet and still some kind of way where one smooth stone you managed to kill him. And what do we all say while we're watching that story? Yeah, right. That can't be real. Yeah, right. I don't believe it. I, I mean, unless that slingshot was some kind of super slingshot that only a superhero would use. Unless that slingshot was embedded with superpowers just like Batman has and just like Iron Man has. Unless that slingshot was manufactured in another century and had power from on on high power, I, there's no way he would knock him down. And that's when David remembered who God is. And that's when you have to know who God is. Because it sounds crazy to show about a battle with a slingshot and one smooth stone. I don't care if that's what you're used to. I don't care if that's what you're comfortable with. What are the odds that you're going to make it right here in the forehead? And what are the odds with a nine foot giant that it's not just going to be something he says out to that makes him mad? What are the odds it's going to be powerful enough to bring him crashing to his feet? Not just stunned, but knocked out, no coming up. I could count to 10 and he still passed out. How, what are the odds? And that's when you have to know who your God is. You have to know that when you show up for the battle, when you show up to any fight, when you show up to, to slay any giant, you don't show up by yourself. It might look like a regular slingshot, but he knew if I just show up, if I just move as God asks me to move, I know that God will add the super to my natural. I know God will take over this fight and fight this fight on my behalf. I don't have to know how he's going to do it. I just have to know who God is to know that my God will do it. All I have to do is show up prepared to fight. But beloved, I don't have to take the fight to the end. I don't have to rely on my own skill sets to take it to the end. I have to know that God is going to add his superpower to everything that I have and work it out in my favor. When David showed up at the fight, he said one thing that we need to remember when we're fighting our giants are moving our mountains. I don't care how long the problem has been there. Nothing is undefeatable. When David showed up, he said, you come against me with sword, with spear, and with javelin, and I come against you. He ain't say I come against you with a slingshot and a smooth stone. David had better sense than that. He didn't say I come against you with my degree. I come against you with my family name. I come against you with my job. I come, he ain't had time for that. He said, you come against me with your accoutrements of war. You come against me with your armor all on. You come against me with a sword that I probably couldn't lift. You come against me with all these things, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God of the host of armies. I come against you by the power of the Lord who is on my side. I come against you in the name of the Lord my God. And that's how you need to go and fight your battles and defeat your giants. I don't know what you're dealing with. 
I don't know what you're going through, but the first thing is you can't put your head in the sand. You can't sit there and weep and cry and say, oh me, oh my, and poor me, poor my. First, you gotta show up to the battle and show up as your authentic self. Don't lead on somebody else's understanding of how you gonna take this corporate problem down. Don't lead on somebody else's understanding of where you should place your foot, your hand. Come in who you are, who God created you to be, and come knowing that when you show up, God is already there, and there'll be more of you than you can see, because God will unloose all the power of heaven to fight on your behalf. So when you're going through testings and trials and trouble on every side, you need to show up for the battle and not weep and moan, but say, devil, I come against you in the name of Jehovah Nisi the lord my banner over me the lord who will lift up a standard against you on my behalf if you're experiencing any lack in your life you need to come against that problem i come against you in the name of jehovah jireh the lord who is my shepherd and the lord who will provide for me i don't know how he's going to do it but i know he's going to do it and if you have a doctor so ready to give you the poor report and you're waddling in sickness and pain. You got to show up for the battle. Don't give up by their uh, reports that say no one has ever been healed from this before. The devil is a liar. You come to me with your reports and your testings. I come to you with the name of Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my God who heals. Recession and poverty. You lost your job. Don't know where the bills are going to get paid don't know how you're gonna make the mortgage i'm not listening to the news of how they might pull back on the grants and things to help me you come against me with threats you come against me with lies i come against you in the name of jehovah jireh the lord who will provide beloved you've got to know who your god is the name above every name everything you have need of strife in your home rebellion in your home. People go to one room and the other without talking. Don't just sit there and take it. Don't use your own mouth to fight it. You say, devil, you come against me with strife. You come against me with depression because it feels like my family is falling apart. But I come against you in the name of Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, my God of peace. And there will be peace in this house and peace will lead and rule and reign in here. And maybe in this COVID season, you felt more isolated and alone than ever before. How you might try to come against me, devil, with depression and loneliness. But I come against you in the name of Elroy, the God who sees me and knows me, who knows my end from my beginning. The one who is the lifter of my head and the lover of my soul. And beloved, even though the world looks like it's going to hell in a handbasket, you need to show up for the fight. I don't know, show up at the voting polls, show up in writing letters, show up in being present, show up and say you come against me, devil, with evil in high places. But I come against you in the name of El Elyon, the God most high, the Lord who is sovereign and supreme. How do you defeat the giants in your life? How do you chop off their heads so that they'll never bother you again? First, you've got to show up to the fight. Learn how to fight for your faith. And show up in your authentic self. Know who you are and accept who you are on your way to who God is calling you to be, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because God is going to use what's in your hand and what's within your reach. But lastly, you have to know who God is. He never asked you to fight it by yourself. He never asked you to fight it in your power. In fact, God says, not by your power, nor your might, but by my spirit. Know who you got, know your God is, invoke his name, and then stand still and watch as he fights for you and watch for your salvation. To God be the glory, hallelujah. We've got to stop running from the battles. 
We've got to just stop putting our head under the sand and weeping, poor me. We've got to show up to the fight, knowing that God will use what we have and God will do the fighting and the heavy lifting and God will cut the giant down. And everybody who's looking on will know there is a God in Israel. There's a God in America. There's a God in Bethel to talk it. There's a God in you that still fights for his children, that still does miracles, and that still keeps his word and works what the enemy meant for evil out for your good. Don't run, don't hide. Show up for the fight. Fight for your faith. Know who you are because you can't fight in somebody else's armor. You can't serve with somebody else's gifts and know that God is going to make up your lack. God is going to make up the rest. God is really the one that's going to do the fighting for you to be victorious. To God be the glory. Is there one on today, my brothers and my sisters, that don't know this God who will fight for you? Too many of us are still running, still hiding, still cowering, still weeping, still moaning. And that doesn't mean that we won't cry, we won't moan. But moan with, <laughs> moan with the word in hand. Moan showing up for the fight. Moan knowing God will take your gifts and use them for his glory. They might not seem much to you, but little is much in the master's hand. And show up knowing you don't stand alone. There's no fight where you stand alone. You stand with the host of heaven's army, backing you up, fighting for you, ensuring that your one smooth stone always hits the target. Let us close in prayer. Heavenly Father, there's just so much evil and wickedness in this world. The enemy is constantly throwing so many spears to try to steal our joy, our peace, and our confidence in you. For far too long, we've held our head down. For far too long, we just sigh or cry or moan and think these things that because they've taken so long to be defeated, they're undefeatable. But Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice, give us a renewed passion and a renewed determination that every time the enemy comes against the kingdom of God by violence, that will rise up and show up for the battle to take it by force, that will show up in our authentic selves that we'll love and accept ourselves right where we are on our way to being better because every gift you've given us, Lord God, was for a purpose, a reason, and a season. But Lord, that will never attempt to do these things on our own. We'll never attempt to move a mountain by our strength as if it is only us we have to depend on but we'll show up by faith because we know it is you who really fight our battles, who really fight for us. And God, if you be for us, who, 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 who can be against us? And the answer to that is a resounding no one. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Oh, present us faultless with exceeding joy before his divine majesty. To the old wise God who will always show up to the battle. If you show up for the battle, he always shows up with reinforcement. He'll always do the heavy lifting for your benefit and bring you out to a victorious place. To him be glory, honor, dominion, and power. Now, henceforth, and forevermore, let the redeemed of the Lord, those determined to fight for their faith here and forevermore, say amen, amen, and amen to God. Amen. Fight for amen. your faith, beloved. Fight for your faith.